The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome into One and All. Thanks for joining me today. John Leonetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. Appreciate you being a part of it today. All right, we've got a great show in store for you. July 1st, it's Monday. Here we go. Uh, coming up on the show, we are going to have Tom Chapman, Executive Director of the Iowa Catholic Conference. We're going to be talking about uh, the fetal heartbeat bill that was taken uh, and put into place. Uh, we have the, um, the statement on the abortion law decision from uh, all four bishops of the dioceses of uh, Iowa. So we'll uh, we'll talk to Tom all about it, give us up to date kind of uh, uh, look inside of this bill and what that actually means for Iowa here coming up right now. We'll have uh, Joe Stopulus, host of Man Up, coming up on the show. He's going to preview his show. Also, uh, the Melcher family is going to be on. They are, uh, uh, you know, oot feed them. Uh, this is going to be the, uh, the segment that... Um, uh, for the month that talks about uh, keeping the faith. And uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about this impact that this, this entire family has had with Oot Feedem on uh, just, I mean, in general, uh, participating in Oot Feedem at Dowling and what that has actually looked like as a family. So we'll have them on coming up at about 745 today. Also, uh, today is the feast day of St. Unipero Cerro, Sarah, excuse me. And um, this is a big feast day because he's the, the first and only uh, saint to be canonized on U.S. soil. So we're going to talk about him, what, uh, what kind of impact he had on the state specifically of California, just coming from that state, actually. But uh, we'll talk about him coming up uh, just in a few minutes as well. He's a big saint for us. And, uh, you know, Pope Francis uh, has talked a lot about St. Unipero Serra as well, and uh, we'll have some quotes from him on uh, on this great saint, too. All right, Deacon Tony, let's offer our day to our Lord with our morning offering. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus in the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Amen. Let's go now to Deacon Mark with the news. Good morning, Deacon. Good morning, John. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. We'll get to your weekend here in just a second because Iowa Catholic Radio News this morning brought to you by Catholic Charities. Learn more at catholiccharitiesdm.org. Communities in western Iowa are still grappling with catastrophic flooding a week after it began, with some areas beginning to rebuild while others remain submerged. Pottawatomie County is particularly affected, with Riverside Park and Council Bluffs still underwater as the river nears its peak. Residents are on high alert, showing similarities to the devastating 2019 floods. The Iowa National Guard has sent equipment and personnel to assist with cleanup efforts as residents brace for a long rebuilding process. The community is urged to reuse sandbags and prepare for future flooding while reflecting on past experiences to navigate the current crisis. This could be a big day and that it's the last day for Supreme Court decisions this term with some key cases still in the balance. Top among them is the question of presidential immunity. Former President Trump's lawyers have argued Trump is immune from prosecution for his alleged crimes committed while in office. The case was centered around federal charges accusing Trump of trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The decision could impact all of Trump's pending court cases. Another decision is expected over laws in Florida and Texas that address complaints that social media sites sites censor people's views, particularly conservative ones. And millions of travelers are on the move ahead of the 4th of July holiday. The TSA says it expects to screen over 30 million passengers through Monday, July 8th. AAA predicts that a record 60 million people will be traveling by car over the holidays, which is nearly 3 million more than last year. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now for a look at sports. In sports on your Monday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Sunday. In the National League, 
The first place Milwaukee Brewers, who now lead the St. Louis Cardinals by six and a half games in the National League Central, defeated the Chicago Cubs by the score of seven to one in Milwaukee. Cubs now in last place in the National League Central, 11 and a half games behind Milwaukee. The St. Louis Cardinals shut out the Cincinnati Reds by the score of two to nothing. Triple-A baseball yesterday, the Iowa Cubs wrapping up a six-game homestand where they went 3-3 and against the St. Paul Saints, the Triple-A affiliate of the Minnesota Twins. Yesterday, it was the Iowa Cubs defeating St. Paul by the score of 9-1 to at Principal Park in Des Moines. Tonight, the Iowa Cubs open up a three-game series at Omaha as they take on the Storm Chasers. First pitch at 7 o'clock at Warner Park in Papillion, Nebraska. The Iowa Cubs will return home later this week against Omaha Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Principal Park in Des Moines. Tonight, high school baseball here on most of these Iowa Catholic Radio Network stations. It's the Central Iowa Metro League Conference doubleheader in Class 5A, Urbandale at Dowling Catholic. We'll bring you game two of that doubleheader beginning at 7 o'clock. Joe Stacy with the call from George Cadero Field on the campus of Dowling Catholic High School in West Des Moines. And with your Monday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And Brady, we've got the uh, downtown uh, chamber golf outing today at the uh, newly Remod- I guess it's what are they restored is what they're saying. Newly restored Wakanda Club. Uh, Iowa Catholic Radio is proud to participate in that event as members of the downtown chamber. What do we have to look forward to in the weather? Yeah, overall looking pretty good, Deacon Mark. Uh, weather today is brought to you by Intervisions Healthcare. You can learn more at IVHcare.org. For today, partly sunny skies. Uh, there is a chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, only at 40%. Highs in the low 70s. And then tonight, mostly cloudy conditions. Showers are likely with a chance of... Uh, uh, thunderstorms after midnight and lows in the mid 60s chance of rain at 70 percent for tonight and then building up to tuesday showers and thunderstorms are likely on tuesday at 90 percent and humid with highs in the mid 80s currently in des moines 63 degrees ames and marshalltown 59 and fairfield 61 degrees that's your forecast on the iowa catholic radio network back to you john well i had a great weekend at the um the national catholic men's leadership alliance uh, and it was a summit that took place, specifically called the Heroic Men's Summit. Um, and I was able to MC it this weekend in California, and uh, we had a couple hundred guys, leaders. So these are uh, guys that are uh, putting on men's conferences all around North America in uh, ministry to men. And not we, we don't say men's ministry. This is uh, really kind of key for us. We say ministry to men because uh, men's ministry kind of seems like it's, oh, this is like a a group, you know, a, a specific group. They're in men's ministry. No, ministry to men is uh, is what we we as men should all be in, and especially in parishes um, that uh, that are doing ministry to men have the have their groups. But uh, this is this is for everyone, right? And it was it was awesome. I mean, I was able to um, to hang out with many people this weekend that um, really made has made and continue to make a, a big dent into. Uh, into the life of the church. I know David B. Wright was there. Uh, David B. Wright's a founder of 40 Days for Life. And uh, David is, um, oh boy, he's on the front lines, man. He's incredible. He's actually going to be speaking at the next Intervisions Conference. So uh, next year. Do you do that? I did that uh, because you were out of town for that uh, for the gala. They yep. announced it that night that yep. uh, he was, gonna, and I was immediately excited because I heard him speak at uh, last year's uh, Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance Summit out in Philadelphia that mm-hmm. uh, you invited me to. Uh, wasn't able to make uh, this event this year, although I really would have loved to have seen the uh, Crystal Cathedral in person. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, Christ Cathedral. It was really, really cool what they've done. I mean they they have they had to gut it completely i mean they just gutted it and then rebuilt it um on the inside but the history of christ cathedral was just i mean it was fascinating fascinating and 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 what what i didn't know um is that you know the plans to be able to give this to the catholic church were long before shula died um and and that's that is 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 of note because he had a great respect for for the catholic church um, in fact, he said uh, when he was older, he said it would, would be a dream for him to be able to give this to the Catholic Church. Hmm. And he did. He was there. And there's a great story. Um, there's a great story that he was um, 
uh, essentially he was down in the in in the big basement. It's very nice, um, and and the priests were there, and this was uh, Bishop Van was there, and and uh, they 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 had purchased um, the Crystal Cathedral, I think, for like seventeen million dollars, which was just pennies pennies on the dollar for what this thing was worth it's a whole campus and um he was there and and he was in the basement um and he was so excited but they were talking about plans and everyone was kind of going around talking about their different plans for this and and what they were going to do and and the impact it was going to make and he just simply stood up right at the uh, right at the end uh shuler robert shuler and he he simply said into a microphone you're not dreaming big enough Right. You're not dreaming big enough for what this campus can can hold. And it really inspired the priests. I know it inspired Bishop Van and many others to think what what kind of impact that this this campus can make. Um, and it was just absolutely beautiful. I mean, it was really, really cool to be able to see. You know, uh, some of it isn't the way I would have designed it, you know, nonetheless. But it was uh, though when you walk in, I mean, you're just you're just surrounded. It really does look like crystal. <laughs> It's glass, but it really does look like Christmas everywhere around you. So it was really cool. And the way they did it, they did it the best they could possibly do. You know, I mean, it was really uh, beautiful the way the church had uh, has been designed. But Robert Shuler, he was a visionary, man. Well, it's uh, I, I have to imagine it's one of those places that's not uh, pictures don't do it justice. No. I, I think it really which was why I was when it was announced last year, I, was like, ah, I put it on my calendar. And then earlier this spring, I, I, I canceled. But uh but uh, you said it was a good event. Men walked, uh, f- flew home, reinvigorated, re-energized to, uh, uh, you know, provide ministry to men back in their communities. And I, I love that, uh, um, you know, that outlook or that the, that look into when we address the uh, when we address masculinity in, in the culture. Uh, you know, we can strengthen the family, and when we strengthen the family, strengthen the church. And if this church is strong, then uh, we can begin to strengthen culture and society. So. It's, uh, I'm glad that you were able to be a part of that event this year. And uh, did they announce dates for it next year? No, or not yet. Still planning? No, it's still planning. But um, yeah, it was it was just wonderful. So, uh, big shout out to our our friends at um, uh, there, and though many of them that have been on this uh, have been on this show. So been good to see so many of them. I'll be going to Hawaii to speak at their men's conference. You know, this August, and a bunch of those guys were there from Hawaii that. Uh, are doing ministry to men all over on the islands. And they, they are just, oh, wow, they're killing it. It was awesome to see. So, you, listen. You know you've arrived on the uh, the speaking circuit when they'll, when they'll fly you to Hawaii. That's a good one. <laughs> the whole family's going. <laughs> Mom and dad are going. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's going uh, to be a lot of fun. So I'll be speaking on, on the island of Maui uh, for a night at a parish there, and then I'll be Back to Honolulu, go to the Big Island for uh, a, a parish there, and then and then we'll be speaking at their men's conference. I'm very excited. I mean, it's my first time ever in Hawaii, so I'm obviously excited for that. But uh, but I mean, they've just got it going there. So anyway, it, it's it's uh, it was a lot of fun. Big shout out to all those guys that are really in the on the front lines when it comes to ministry to men. All right, I don't have time to talk about Unipro Sarah right now, but we'll talk about him here in the second half hour. Um, for our saint of the day, there's a lot to be able to know about this man, a heroic man. He's a saint, of course, but he was the first saint and only so far to be canonized on U.S. So- soil. So uh, we'll talk about St. Unipero Sarah here in the second half hour today. When we come back, Tom Chapman's going to be on to talk about the new fetal heartbeat bill and what this law actually means for the state of Iowa. Don't go anywhere. Tom Chapman right around the corner. John Lee Nettie here on the Catholic Morning Show. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support provided by Divine Treasures, a Catholic book and gift store serving the Des Moines community since 1992. Divine Treasures, 5701 Hickman Road, Des Moines, 515-255-5230. Thank you, Divine Treasures, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Des Moines, where empowering individuals and strengthening families have been the cornerstone of care for a century. Services for neighbors in need include a food pantry, professional counseling, 
emergency family shelter, and refugee resettlement. At Catholic Charities, lives are transformed and you can be part of the mission. To learn more about how to help Catholic Charities fulfill Christ's promise of help and hope, visit catholiccharitiesdm.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies, serving Catholic families in Iowa, offering life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, and retirement annuities. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society, able to provide financial security to members and their families. Learn how Knights of Columbus agent Walker Borman can help at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801 or kofc.org. kofc.org. Support for programming provided by Modus Maryland, offering a wide selection of clothing for a baptism, first communion, quinceanera, wedding, or any special occasion, as well as accessories and jewelry, 4120 Southeast 14th Street in Des Moines, and online, modusmaryland.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from First Heartland Financial Group consultant Scott Prickett, an independent financial firm offering personalized financial advice with your insurance and investments for all stages of life. 515-202-6218 or online at firstheartlandfinancialgroup.com. Join me, Father Mike Mahoney, at the Next Man Up West Power Lunch Friday, June 14th at St. Francis of Assisi in West Des Moines. I'll be sharing my journey to being a newly ordained priest for the Diocese of Des Moines. The program begins at noon. Lunch provided by Chick-fil-A, iowacatholicradio.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. All right, second half hour, we're going to talk to the Melcher family about Oot Fetum. So uh, it'll be our Oot Fetum segment. Looking forward to that. Also, the life of St. Junipero Serra today, the first saint to be canonized on U.S. soil. We'll talk about uh, St. Sarah coming up in the second half hour as well. All right, let's go to Tom Chapman right now. Tom comes on. Well, when there's big decisions uh, being made, even when there's no decisions being made, Tom, we love having you on because uh, you get to keep us up to date. I told you to talk to me like I'm five years old with sure. this new fetal heartbeat <laughs> bill that's uh, taking place. So congratulations for this. Yeah. I know you've been working hard on it. No, we've worked on it for many years. And the first thing I should say is thanks to many of your listeners for contacting their legislators and praying about this over the years. And so this is uh, a good thing that happened last week. So years this has been in, in play. Yeah, I mean, the first time it was passed was 2018. Really? This was, was passed? Yeah, and then the Supreme Court said it really wasn't ripe to decide, and so there's been huh. an injunction against it, and then it was passed again last summer. Okay, so, I mean, that's six years. Yeah, yeah, and it's been talked about longer than that. Do I mean, move, obviously. Do, do the courts move like the church, slow? <laughs> yes, <laughs> very often, <laughs> very often that's exactly what happened. So it took its time to work through the process, but what happened is, Last week, the Iowa Supreme Court decided that there essentially is no right to an abortion in the state constitution. So therefore, the heartbeat bill, which would stop abortions, most abortions after probably six weeks of pregnancy, can go into effect very soon. So this is something that went into law in 2018. It was over, overturned. Right. Is that, that, that Yeah, it just language? really never went into effect. Never went into yeah. effect. And now 2024, it is officially into effect. So... So this means that if you can detect a fetal heartbeat, Mm -hmm. then there will, it is against the law to have an abortion. That's right. In Iowa. In Iowa. Is this the, how many states? I mean, this Uh, is one of There's probably, you know, 13 or 14 states that have a similar law. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the bishops, what do they think about this? Well, no, we're very pleased about the decision itself. I mean, it's been something that we've advocated for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, it's a good thing. I do think it brings us, you know, even more recognition of the burdens that we have as a society and as parishes is how are we going to help people, yeah. you know, who think that they have this escape hatch of abortion, which we've never agreed with. But we need to make sure that they know that we're there to love them and to help them. So now is a perfect time to be going back to your parish. And most parish, most parishes have some kind of ministry that helps uh, pregnant women and there are many pregnancy support centers, and so now we have that that we want to get on right away. Well, I, I think you're right, Tom, and th- I've said this for a long time. I mean, there's there's a lot of misconceptions out there and people that think, okay, well, you know, Catholics or people that are pro-life are just pro-birth. Um, and there might yeah. be some people that have done that. You know, there might be some people that have had that um, that understanding, but it, that, that's not the way, I mean, I see it, and, and I, I have seen so many different apostolates, ministries out there, uh, one right next door, Inner Visions, that is solely concentrated on both the mother and the baby. I mean, 
I mean, the emails, the calls that I get on, on just raising money for a van or just so a mom and, a, and, and her, her baby can have a, a session with, for professional pictures. I mean, and there's so many things like that, which is, which is good. But you're right. There's a ton of work to do here. I think so. I mean, the fact that you're, you know, speaking from outside of it, the fact that you're a woman means you have a special benefit and a special burden in the sense that you can become a mother. And so yeah. we all have a responsibility to help help through that. So now can this be overturned? Um, I think it's unlikely. Of course, everything can be overturned. It's, you know, you have political processes and new justices and things like that. But I, I do think that this law will... Um, going to effect very soon after the paperwork is done and will be in place for quite a while in Iowa. You know, when we talk about human beings, right, what, what, what makes a human a heartbeat? You've got brain waves. You've got DNA that is specific only to you. Sounds to me like a human. Yeah, it's a human being. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's how, that's how the church thinks about yeah, it. I yeah. mean, we certainly want to protect from the earliest stages. Yeah. Uh, so what's next? Well, uh, I think it. First things first is the pastoral piece, you know, that we have to do yeah. in the parishes, and I hope people really pay attention to that. Are people talking about it? I mean, well, I don't think you know most people are kind of uh, they're not paying attention right, to everything yeah. that's happening. But it's I, summer, Tom. Yeah, I know. And the, the, <laughs> the Supreme Court, both here in Iowa and at the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court, they always do their most consequential things, if I can say that right, at the end of June, you know, and is that beginning of really? July, because it's the end of the fiscal year, I see. you know. So they always hold it for this time of year, and people aren't necessarily paying that much attention. So this, you know, I, I would say this is the fruit of what happened with the Dobbs decision, is it squarely put this issue back into politics, mm -hmm. which I think is a very good idea, because it was held in a special category before. Now we fight it out state by state, yeah. and, and we I, make our argument. And, and I have the statement here on, on this law. Um, they, they, the bishops have quoted Pope Francis on this, let us respect and love human life, especially vulnerable life in the mother's womb, um, that, uh, that the Holy Father has said, and many, many other quotes, of course, that he said on this. So the bishops are pleased. Um, what else are we working? Are we done now? Oh, I don't think we're done. I mean, we have a lot to do in Iowa in terms of how we care for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's you know, yesterday was the deadline for education savings accounts, applications for next year. What does that mean? Um, that means that kids could get uh, some state money to go to a Catholic school to help pay for tuition. And so that has been in place and is gradually expanding until next fall, a year from now, that will be a universally available program mm -hmm. in the state. So we're very excited about implementing that. That's going on. I was talking to my yeah. Uber driver about this the other day, um, and he was he was hearing about it for the first time he's from kenya and he's got five kids and uh, wow. he sends his kids uh to to a couple different schools and i was telling him about this you know i'm i'm not very educated on it like you are tom but i mean i was i was saying because he was saying he really liked to get his kids into a private school and uh, that's when i started talking about this and so he didn't even know that you know there's yeah. money available so um, it, with incomes that may be higher incomes, are they able to get the same amount of money as those in lower incomes? How's all that? Yes, work? right. Right now, if you're under 400 percent of the federal poverty level, you could have uh, applied for this year. Next year, it will be any income level, and it's the same amount of money. So, I think what you're going to see is you're going to have even more people take advantage of that. And frankly, get, remember, it's the same thing for public school. The richest people in Iowa get a free public school education. So. We think that's fair. Uh, we think it's a good thing for parents to be able to decide. We know that parents don't know about it. I mm -hmm. mean, we've been doing digital marketing and things like that. So I think that's going to be an ongoing challenge to get people to understand that the money is just not coming from the angels, you know. <laughs> it's coming through the state, and we're very appreciative of that, and we think people should know that. So we're at the end now of the legislative session? Yeah, legislative session is over. So now, like I have a Human Life and Dignity Committee today, so we're looking at what we're working on in the fall. Uh, there's the immigration issue that's still there. That law has been enjoined, so that law is not into effect. We're very happy about that. So, so talk but, about that for a second. Yeah, there was a, a law which if someone was uh, here without papers or they had previously been denied to come to this country, but they're here, it would have been a state law that could have had them arrested. And we didn't support that. Um, the bishops did not support No, that. not at all, um, because we would like to see a federal system that works. Mm -hmm. And so, and that was really what the state legislators were trying to do, I think, was trying to push the federal government to get better solutions at the border. Because 
I think everyone would look at that and say that's not a good situation. So there's work that needs to happen, but to have a state by state response. Could this um, still go into effect or how does Oh, that... I think so. I mean, it could. I, I rather doubt it because the courts have been very serious about saying, nope, federal law carries on abortion. Yeah. You can't have 50 different immigration laws. So I don't think that law is going to go into effect. And legislators knew it had problems when they it passed just, it. It just doesn't sit well with me. No. You know, I, I, I think everyone wants the border to be solved. You know, there, there's an immigration issue that, that you know, needs to be tackled. And, and our, our um, federal authorities hopefully are working on it. Uh, but uh, I, that that just doesn't sit well with yeah, me. Yeah, well, you've got we've got a problem where neither party really wants to solve the problem. Yeah. Evidently, yeah. you know, because when Republicans have been in charge, they didn't. Democrats didn't either. But we need a serious look at what the number of visas are and how the work situation looks. And so we keep pointing to that. But um, like I've so, always said, yeah. Tom, you're going to make everyone angry. Oh, <laughs> isn't that great? Believe me. Yeah. It, you <laughs> see my email inbox, you know, <laughs> um, uh, all over the place, which is fine. Uh, but you know, we. We're for what we're for. We're Catholic. Right? The Catholic Church. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Um, bishops are very supportive of the work that they want to do and what we're doing. So, you know, but people have different opinions and that's okay. I, I mean, the key is you have to figure out what is the church saying and why. And then you have to go get active. And it's not always going to be everybody's going to have the same solution. And this is always, this is key for us, friends. We look beyond the party. We look beyond politics. This is at Jesus. You know, we, we look to Jesus. We look to our faith. This is, you know, and again, if, if you want to, if you want to be Catholic, you are going to make everyone angry. What, what do you, what else are you working on? <laughs> well, I think you're not, you're not taking time off. Well, uh, no, I'll definitely take some time oh, okay, off good. here soon, you know, but uh, we're working on some things. We had a meeting with the disabilities uh, ministers of the diocese last week. And nice. so we're looking at some things that, relate to state law on that. Okay. Um, we're always interested in the health care pieces. And so those are the types of things we're going to get and set up for discussions this fall. Where are you going on vacation? Well, uh, vacation, we're going to go see Michael, our son, nice. in Las Vegas. His birthday, his 30th birthday is next week. So we're going to go see him. Oh, that'd and be so fun, we'll do man. Some things like that. 30th yeah. birthday. That's awesome. Oh, I know My it. goodness. I know it. I'm getting old. Yeah, tell you know I know. So <laughs> That's crazy. Tell me about it. <laughs> All right, Tom, you're a good man. How can people uh, send you hate mail? Well, the best thing to do is just send it to Tom <laughs> at IowaCatholicConference dot org. That's fine. We respond. And, I know you. You know, it's a look at our website IowaCatholicConference dot org. Sign up for our updates. They're they're really good updates as well. The Iowa oh, Catholic. No, I, I need to jump in on a positive note yeah. to, to thank Tom for his great work. Oh yeah, <laughs> this yeah, so so yeah great. It, Tom's it, incredible. Well, it's it is a thankless job, I think, in many regards, yeah. right? And so the uh, we 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 pray the eternal rewards are there for you. But it's, uh, it's religion and politics. Yeah, you know, I talk religion and politics. The two things. Every day. No, that one, no one. You're not supposed. To, to I'm not do popular. That. I don't get invited to a lot of yeah. dinner. Parties. I was just gonna say. So t- so if you want to invite Tom over for a Thanksgiving <laughs> or Christmas dinner, <laughs> what do you do? Tom? Tom, start with that. Oh, my God. Tom Chapman, everyone. God bless you, Tom. Yeah, You're a good you. man. Tom is just working tirelessly. Really awesome stuff uh, from the bishops. And again, friends, uh, support this work of the Iowa Catholic Conference. Let them know. We, you know, again, I, I joke, there, there's going to be a lot of hate mail, though. But let them know that you support, that you, uh, you're on the side, and then get to work. Right? There's a ton of work to be able to do. Volunteer. Find something uh, to be able to help any way, shape, or form, not just complain, uh, not just uh, cheer, but to actually help and to do some good, some of that good work on the front lines. All right, coming up second half hour, the Melcher family is going to be on from Oot Feedum. We're going to talk to them, also Joe Stopulus, and we're going to talk about the life of St. Unipero Sarah. All coming up here in the second half hour of the Catholic Morning Show, friends. Let's go right now to Father with today's Gospel and Reflection. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other shore. A scribe approached and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. The demands of discipleship of our Lord Jesus Christ are total. He asks for everything. As this scribe approaches and says to Jesus, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus takes him up on it. He says, Okay, if you want to follow me wherever I go, just know 
that the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Following Jesus means giving everything. Sometimes we will be asked to go places where we did not anticipate going, take up crosses we did not anticipate carrying. But discipleship of Jesus also includes the hundredfold reward, joys, happiness, and fulfillment that we had no idea existed. Because following the Lord is our greatest freedom and joy. May God bless you and let us continue praying for each other. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, this is Deacon Steve Tatz from the Basilica of St. John in Des Moines. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from John Leonetti, EOS Implementer, the entrepreneurial operating system, helping businesses and organizations clarify, simplify, and achieve their vision. John.Leonetti at EOSWorldwide.com. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at GoldenRulePHC.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. Come celebrate your Catholic faith where lives are changed. World-class speakers. Adoration. Inspirational music. Holy Mass. Reconciliation. And so much more. A weekend of faith sharing, faith building, and praise. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. September 28th and 29th at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Details and ticket info at ChristOurLifeIowa.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. All right, the Melcher family is going to be on for our Oot Feedem segment. They've had a big impact, made a big impact. And the family of Oot Feedem keep the faith over at Dallin Catholic and beyond. It is now at the stage where it is and beyond. I mean, uh, people that have graduated out of Dallin and other schools around the country um, in this program that is really just changing lives, helping people. Fall in love with the Lord Jesus and to stay in love with the Lord Jesus. You know, that, that, that needs to be nurtured. That relationship needs to be nurtured within our lives. The devil is out there. He's prowling. So we'll, uh, we'll have them on coming up. Also, Joe Stopulus. And we're going to talk about the life of St. Junipero Serra, the first saint to be canonized on U.S. soil had a tremendous, talk about an impact, had a tremendous impact on the United States of America. We'll, uh, we'll talk about him here coming up. All right, Deacon Tony, let's offer and pray our St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deacon Mark now with your news. Thank you, John. Iowa Catholic Radio News Time is 733. Your news for July 1st, Monday, brought to you by Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Des Moines. Learn more at CatholicCharitiesDM.org. A new law in Iowa regulating THC in products takes effect today. The law caps the amount of THC allowed per serving and container. The law requires products with THC to be labeled with health risk advisories. It prohibits individuals under 21 from purchasing such products. The Department of Health and Human Services will establish rules related to packaging and labeling with guidelines expected to be finalized after the law takes effect. Some companies, like the Happy Can, are frustrated by the changing regulations and plan to remove products from Iowa shelves while seeking clarity on compliance. Several companies have filed lawsuits against the state over the THC restrictions in in beverages. The Pella City Council will discuss the future of renovations for the Pella Community Center and potential construction of a new rec center at an upcoming meeting. 
The council will approve a partnership with the Friends of the Pella Community Center to allow fundraising for the projects. A final decision on both projects is expected by December 3rd, with funding gaps remaining for the rec center. The main challenge will be scaling down the project to meet current funding levels and securing cash for construction. The city's financial advisor will present options for consideration at the meeting, giving six months to secure funding for both facilities. Simone Biles is on her way to the Paris Summer Olympics. The 27-year-old secured a spot on the five-member squad by being the top finisher in the U.S. Olympic team trials in Minneapolis over the weekend. After winning four gold medals and a bronze at the 2016 Games in Rio, plus a silver and bronze at the Tokyo Games in 2021, Biles is one middle away from being the most decorated American Olympics gymnast ever. She's only the fourth American woman to make three Olympic gymnastics teams. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now for more sports. In sports on your Monday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard, all of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Sunday. In the National League, the first place Milwaukee Brewers, who now lead the St. Louis Cardinals by six and a half games in the National League Central, defeated the Chicago Cubs by the score of seven to one in Milwaukee. Cubs now in last place in the National League Central, 11 and a half games behind Milwaukee. The St. Louis Cardinals shut out the Cincinnati Reds by the score of two to nothing. Triple A baseball yesterday, the Iowa Cubs wrapping up a six game homestand where they went three and three against the St. Paul Saints, the Triple A affiliate of the Minnesota Twins. Yesterday, it was the Iowa Cubs defeating St. Paul by the score of nine to one at Principal Park in Des Moines. Tonight, the Iowa Cubs open up a three-game series at Omaha as they take on the Storm Chasers. First pitch at 7 o'clock at Warner Park in Papillion, Nebraska. The Iowa Cubs will return home later this week against Omaha Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Principal Park in Des Moines. Tonight, high school baseball here on most of these Iowa Catholic Radio Network stations. It's the Central Iowa Metro League Conference doubleheader. In Class 5A, Urbandale at Dowling Catholic. We'll bring you Game 2 of that doubleheader beginning at 7 o'clock. Joe Stacy with the call from George Cadero Field on the campus of Dowling Catholic High School in West Des Moines. And with your Monday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And let's go to Brady now for a look at our weather. Thanks, Deacon Mark. Good morning, everyone. Weather today is brought to you by Intervisions Healthcare. You can learn more at IVHcare.org. For today, looking at partly sunny skies, a chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, highs in the low 70s, chance of rain sitting at 40% today. Tonight, mostly cloudy conditions. Showers are likely with a chance of thunderstorms after midnight, lows in the mid 60s, and chance of rain at 70% tonight. And then moving in into your Tuesday, showers and thunderstorms being likely at 90% Whoa. and humid with highs in the mid 80s. Currently in Des Moines, 63, Ames and Marshalltown, 61, and Fairfield, 60 degrees. That's your forecast on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Back to you, John. What about July 4th? Ooh, that's a great question. Have you got that? I don't have it you with me. It. Yeah. I, I've heard there might be some rain showers. Mm. This is my favorite holiday. Is it really? Fourth of July. A yeah. like secular holiday, right? Secular. Not, yeah, 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 we're not, yeah, we're not including Easter and Christmas. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Of course no. not. No. You like Fourth of July better I than Thanksgiving? It. Yes. Hmm. Yes. I, I like the Fourth of July because you get to be outside. It's hot. And, uh, you know, the people are there's parades and there's uh, I'm, I'm going to sound like a, I'm going to sound like a cranky old man. Rots. I, I'm sick of fireworks already. Well, it, it, it's it's I'm it, not a firework. It's, guy. You know, it, and it's just the. The lack of common decency, you know, yeah. it, people shooting them off at, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't get and there's people that obviously their, their pets have issues. You're old. Other people that have, you know, PTSD issues. And, <laughs> man, just quit with the fireworks already, Quit with the fireworks My already. goodness. You know, How the, old are between you? Between 8 and 11 <laughs> on July 4th and then be done with it. Like, come on, man. Do you have a dog? No. No. Oh. We do, and and this will be the first I don't have, time. I don't have any of the issues I just described. No. I just I just don't like being woke up <laughs> at eleven o'clock at night with <laughs> with thundering booms for no reason whatsoever. Now, I I the, gotta say I've known you now for quite some time. You seem like a guy that would enjoy lighting off, setting things on fire. Oh, oh I like fire. I just don't like and. and like a professional fireworks show, like yeah. the, the Iowa Cubs do on on Friday night home games. Uh, I'm all about a professional show, but uh, you know Joe Amateur that just went right. and dropped fifteen hundred bucks at the stand up the street to sit and 
shoot off nonsense for three hours straight. Sure. Like, no, but no, thank First you. First of all, it's no, thank it's you. pretty dangerous. You know, I, my, I know people who've been injured. Yeah, my dad. Like there was a, 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 a professional athlete who had his career altered because yep. uh, yep. you know, of the, the, the injury to his hand. I mean, he was still able to play, but I don't think he was the same player. Well, you know, I grew up, my dad was a firefighter, and so he was um, a paramedic. And so I, oh, every, every. Your dad is Captain Cautious, though. I mean, he, no, yeah. no trampolines. No, yes. uh, he, he, no trampolines. But well, he, he saw the worst. He was of the worst. not. He was he was actually, you know, very uh, lenient on virtually everything in my life. But there were some things that, man, he put the fear of God in me on motorcycles. He put yep. the fear of God in me on that real Christmas trees. I will never have a real Christmas tree. I, I, I mean, he almost died in a fire because of a real Christmas mm. tree right up the street from our house. That would change your perspective. Yeah, that was, that was a big one. But I mean, I, I remember for years of him on that. And then, uh, fireworks was a big one for him, you know, and my dad, he's, he's one of those guys that, man, he, he takes risks. He's got all that, you know, likes the heights and stuff, but you know, that was, that, that's not in my, uh, it's not in my wheel. So he's a, a selective risk taker. Yeah, I like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's go to your saint of the day. It's a big one today. This is your saint of the day on Iowa Catholic radio. Well, this saint has a statue of himself in statuary hall in the U S Capitol, St. Unipero Sarah today. He was a Spanish-born teacher in the 18th century. He was ordained on the Spanish island of Majorca and took the name of St. Francis's childlike companion, Brother Uniper. He studied and later became a professor before he recognized in himself a deep calling to the missionary life. He got his Ph.D. He was a very smart man. Sarah boarded a boat and traveled to Mexico. He walked 250 miles from Veracruz to Mexico City. And on the journey, he was bitten by a bug. Well, the bite developed into a painful infection, and Sarah would struggle for the rest of his life with his leg. After 18 years spent working in the missions of southern and central Mexico, the king of Spain ordered the Mexican authorities to expand their reach into California. The Spanish conquistador convinced Sarah to join him. So in 1769, Sarah founded the first California mission, San Diego. Sarah founded eight more missions in his lifetime. Unipero made the long trip to Mexico City to settle great differences with the military commander. He arrived at the point of death. The outcome was substantially what Unipero sought, the famous regulation protecting the Indians in the missions. It was the basis for the first significant legislation in California, a Bill of Rights for Native Americans. Unipero was canonized in September of 2015 by Pope Francis. We ask today, St. Unipero Sarah, to pray for us. Amen. He, he's very significant, friends, because he is in the life of St. Unipero Sarah. He's the first saint to be canonized on U.S. soil they say that he walked over 4,000 miles over the course of his life. 4,000 miles. I mean, this, this is how he got around, obviously, was just walking from one place to another. I mean, just imagine, you know, all throughout Mexico, walking, and then, of course, walking, getting to California. Had to be in shape, right? I would, I would have to believe so. He, yeah. But... Remember, he also had a terrible leg for a lot of his life, too. So, I mean, the so v- that- very appropriate that the uh, Eucharistic pilgrimage that their procession that came through uh, the, the state of Iowa last week was that was his namesake. It yeah. was the uh, uh, St. Unipero Cerro, uh, Sarah, excuse me, route. Good saint. Making its way to Indianapolis, just like the others. All right. We do have our friend, Mr. Joe Stopulus. I'm, I'm ready. Joe Stopulus. He's here. He's the host of. The uh, the uh, uh, man up, man up. There we go. What's that? What's that show called? Well, I've got. <laughs> listen, here here's a deal. I was just in um, I was just in California, and I, I've got you know nine guys talking about all their podcasts to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, every guy has got a podcast now. Every single person I know has got a podcast now. Yeah, but not all of them are not all of them are good, John. That's true, and not all of them are on Iowa Catholic Radio. Not all at nine o'clock every all Monday. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just. Yeah, mine's my longest running of all. Though. I'm still I'm there. Like I'm still there. I gotta, ago. I gotta get back uh, in, in my mind back here to Iowa. Here, Joe Stopulus. What do we got on the <laughs> show today? We are continuing our exploration of the work by St. Francis of Sales, the mm-hmm. introduction to the Vout Life. John, I've gotten tremendous feedback 
on this episode, which, which leads you to believe it is the right course of action to break this thing. Into, I mean, I still don't know what, how it's going to end. It's going to probably be at least five episodes. I don't know what number today is. Keep going. Four. I'm, I'm losing track, but it, we've gotten a lot of good feedback. And, John, as you know, this book could be a series in and of itself, like a really long, in-depth series. series. And, um, it's, been, it's been a joy for me to, to re- go back to this book and then to have you know some listeners reach back out to me and, and tell me what they're getting out of it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's awesome. And so I'll continue to uh, push that everyone should be listening in. Again, if you haven't, this is why the podcast exists, right? So if you haven't listened to the first couple episodes, Go back, listen to the first two, three episodes, and you'll be caught up for today. But yeah, it's a, it's been a, it's been a joy for me to be able to continue to, to dive through this book. I mean, I, I, I truly believe he's St. Francis of Sales. He's one of the most underrated saints we have. I've, I've talked about that before, but he's probably the most quotable saint of any yeah. saint that I've cool. ever read. You, you've said the same thing. I mean, yeah. this guy, oh, everything I'm, you I'm read, you're like, oh, I got to remember that, and then you go through and you, you forget everything. Yeah, on the first episode, I said I've quoted I've quoted this book a lot. I just never actually explored it before because right. there's all these random quotes. Hey, another saint to put on your uh, calendar for this week, July fourth. Well, it's your favorite holiday, John. It's yes. also the feast day of Blessed Pierre Giorgio. This is the last time with him being a blessed. He'll be saint next year. Yeah. So, well, actually, you know what? It, blessed canonization is after the fourth. But anyway, yeah, very excited for the fourth. Well, listen, there's some big saints that are going to be uh, canonized next year. I mean, you've got yeah. Blessed Carlo Acutis. Uh, and 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 uh, ones that you just said. I mean, this is gonna, it's going to be a big year in the Jubilee year, twenty twenty five. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yep. All right, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Nine o'clock today. Yeah. Man up, everyone. You can also go to Iowa Catholic. <laughs> just all right. See you. Bye. <laughs> Click. Uh, yeah. The, Bye. The, the only book commentary that might be as long as the book itself. Yeah. Is, uh, J- Joe, Joe's comment. It, no. Bye, it is Joe. Really good. Take care, buddy. <laughs> My word. All right, the Melter family coming up right after this. We're talking about Oot Feedem and the tremendous impact that they've made for our Oot Feedem segment. Just around the corner, John Lee here in the Catholic Morning Show. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Here's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines this Monday, July 1st. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Catholic Charities has funding available for those who suffered loss as the result of tornadoes and severe storms. If you need help, Contact your pastor who can put you in touch with the right folks at Catholic Charities. If you're looking for a fun way to serve this summer, consider serving a meal at St. Catherine of Siena Student Center at Drake University. They have Mass every Sunday at 5 o'clock, and then they like to provide a meal afterwards. If you're not afraid of a little bit of cooking, contact St. Catherine and ask for Megan Schultz. If you think you might be called to become a deacon, consider coming to a gathering on August 11th at St. John the Apostle Parish in Norwalk. It'll be a great opportunity to talk to deacons about what their vocation has been like, how they balance serving the church with their vocation to their marriage, and more. We'll talk, start at 2 o'clock and come hungry. The Knights of Columbus are cooking some barbecue for us. Questions? Email vocations at dmdiocese. Org. That's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Weekdays at 11 a.m. Central, Father John Ricardo provides instructions on the Catechism of the Catholic Church and other topics critical to those seeking answers to life's greatest questions. Christ is the answer with Father John Ricardo on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for programming provided by Modus Maryland, offering a wide selection of clothing for a baptism, first communion, quinceanera, wedding, or any special occasion, as well as accessories and jewelry. 4120 Southeast 14th Street in Des Moines and online modusmaryland.com. Matt Wilcom here from Iowa Catholic Radio. I'd like to thank you for your continued support of this apostolate. Because of you, we're reaching more souls in more ways than ever before. Whether you've had your faith strengthened by either our talk or music channels, or if you've been impacted by one of our other outreach initiatives, you experience firsthand the value Iowa Catholic Radio brings to the Catholic and Christian community. If you haven't made the decision yet to become a family member, please consider a $30 a month sustaining gift. Just visit iowacatholicradio.com and welcome to the family. The Catholic Morning Show. 
on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Tomorrow we'll have Deacon Randy Keel, so make sure to stick around. No, it's not Thursday. It's going to be Tuesday. And uh, Deacon Randy, an incredible man for his monthly segment. Everyone loves Deacon Randy. All right, let's go to our next guest, the Melcher family. We've got Emily, who's the mom. Will's the son. Mary-Kate's on the phone. Hi, Mary-Kate. Hi. All right, let's talk about Utfita. Mom, you were saying you love this this organization. Yes, I do. Why? I just think it has helped the Holy Spirit come into these kids and now parents and just set their faith on fire to just keep learning more and more about their faith because we're always learning and growing. And I just think it's a great, safe um, group setting for parents and kids. And I just love it. So how did you get involved? They're my kids. Yeah. So your, your kids joined, I mean, years ago? Yep. My yeah. kids joined at Dowling. Uh, Will first, I believe your sophomore year or junior yeah. year. He was kind of late to the game finding a group, but um, they did a great job finding him a group. And then Mary Kate kicked off probably the end of her freshman year. And then we have another daughter who's at Dowling now who just finished her first year with Feedem. But um, as a parent, when your kids start knowing more about you, especially in the faith that you grew up in, it's kind of disheartening. And so it drove me to want to learn more about the faith. So I started doing um, Bible in a Year mm. with Father Mike Schmitz. Oh, yeah. And that, just the repetitive message I kept hearing um, drove me more. And then Addie Magruder sent out an email that they were starting a parent group. And so, of course, I joined it right away. And now I'm about six months in with a group of moms yeah. in similar situations that I've been in. We have an amazing leader, Julie Nelson, and we've been focusing on the Holy Spirit and the last few months have just been probably the most peaceful I've ever been in my life. Really, And I know it's through the introduction of the Holy Spirit and Julie. Um, we went through the Bible and read scripture. And now we're reading, uh, we're watching a um, series of Father Dave Pravanka nice. on the Holy Spirit. Is it the, uh, the, the wild the goose. goose? The wild goose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so it's just a safe group for us to ask questions. Sure. We have. sure. And I think I'm just learning that there's, we never know everything, and um, it's really just put my faith on fire. It will. Did you start all this? Joining? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So I, I'd say I started joining, and so a point my mom brought up was the asking questions. For me, Utfidum was huge. Something I noticed is a lot of people are, are usually intimidated to ask questions to be wrong, but mm-hmm. Utfidum ultimately taught me, you know, who cares if you don't know yeah. everything about your faith? Uh, for my mentor, we had a priest, so that was a perfect opportunity nice. for us to ask any any question we wanted. Oh, yeah. Um, had some great guys in our group. Um, overall, big picture, didn't really quite realize the impact, um, but just going through college, still being involved with Utfidum, um, having my first opportunity to go to um, Seek twice, go to Encounter up in Michigan, um, just really keep learning a lot about my faith, um, still with uh, asking questions, just knowing that you know, there were so many situations where people knew so much more than me, mm-hmm. and I was embarrassed of it, but I still went through it, and I think that's the best part of Utfidum. Um, I remember when I went abroad to Franciscan, people, professors that knew so much more than me. Oh, yeah. But Utfidum prepared me. You went me. to Franciscan University? No. No. So I studied abroad in Austria okay. through Franciscan. I went to nice. Wabash. Um, but I just remember being in the classroom, asking so many questions, um, writing a paper, actually, about that once. And cool. Just... I think that's something a lot more people could benefit from. What about you, Mary Kate? How did you get involved? Yeah, so I went on a retreat my freshman year and came back, and a group of girls from that retreat were kind of like, "Hey, you heard about this thing? You know, did you get together once a week and just talk about your faith?" And I was like, "Okay, that sounds great." Yeah. And that kind of really kickstarted my faith journey in high school and at Dowling, and just all throughout high school, really getting to know the Lord in an intimate way um, through the women in my group and our mentors was just something really unique and special that really elevated my high school experience at at Dowling and um, really, I think, created a lot of friendships that really got to go a lot deeper um, and just grow in virtue. Um, But even after um, Dowling now, Utfidum has impacted my just college experience overall. It really built a strong foundation for me to get involved on my college campus through Focus. But also, I'm a me and my brother both uh, were part of the scholarship, and so we were able to 
go on different religious encounters, like going to Sikh. I recently got to go on a mission trip to Peru, and it's because of the scholarship from its seat on that, like, those things are possible. So it's continued to affect my life in so many ways. Where are you now? Uh, I currently go to Kansas State University, but this summer I'm living in Omaha for an internship. So at Kansas State, they do have focus, as you said, and uh, this is something, yeah. I mean, it, it, the, the thing I love about this is it's just such an easy handoff. Right. I mean, you go from you go from uh, feedum to focus so many people. And it's just I mean, it's just like natural. Right. Yes. And it's even funny because I remember my sophomore year during one of our meetings, we were kind of towards the end of sophomore year, kind of starting to look at college. And our mentor sat us down and showed us this map on Focus's website and was like, these are all the college campuses in the U.S. that have focus. Hmm. And this is what you should be using to look for your colleges. And I was like what? I've never heard of this. Like, yeah. what is this? And, you know, I honestly didn't really consider or have, you know, where focus was or consider, you know, faith, the place of where I picked. I was very big on I wanted to pick a big school where, like, I knew I could, su- like, succeed academically, and then I would let my faith kind of follow me. Um, but I'm so fortunate enough, and I've been so blessed that at Kansas State, we have an amazing focus group and there's just a really great community of catholic students and it's because of the things i learned in it feed on that i really have been able to thrive there i mean let's bring mom back in emily that this is a dream for a lot of parents is to have their kids really love their faith it is and i am just so grateful mary kate's <clears throat> excuse me it feed them leaders her senior year they probably they were like mother figures in her faith I was probably not at the point that I felt comfortably to be there. And um, I remember they had told the girls, and I think Mary-Kate was on Iowa Catholic Radio, like, what is your plan? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? How are you going to keep this going? And sometimes coming from your mom, I don't know, (laughs) just seems like another to do. And they checked in with her. And I just think, and same thing with Will, like even through college, like that's not typically when our faith grows. Right. And I'm so grateful for, t- for them to keep a lookout for what my kids needed faith wise. And the impact it's had on our family is, is amazing. It's fun to see uh, Emily, Will, Mary Kate, oh, man, we're out of time. That went quick. <laughs> yeah. Guys, uh, thank you. Thanks for, for diving in. Thanks for being a witness, um, not just to this program, but uh, to the faith, to the church, to, to Jesus Christ. It's pretty incredible. So God bless you all. Thank you. Thank all you. right. Deacon Tony, what do you say we pray? May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit come down upon all of us, protect us all from evil, and bring us all to his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We'll be back on live tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm John Leonetti. Be confident in Christ's mercy and his love.